What's going on? Welcome back to Financial Journey. So today we're going to talk to you about NEO. I want to give you an overview of some of the current data points, break it down on what shorts did on Friday and why it went up as much as it did. Before I get into any of that, make sure you just hit that thumbs up. And with that, let's get right to it. So NEO did have a pretty epic day on Friday, closed 8.72% in the green, 454 the high, 439 the low, 59 million shares were traded, 50 is the average. So it was getting a lot of attention from larger institutions, despite there being no official news, no SEC filings nothing along those lines so last official news was on april the 9th unofficially though there's been a lot of things coming out one of which was on thursday so that was the 25th and neo and lotus did enter into a strategic cooperation deal on battery charging and swapping so in my opinion this is pretty kick-ass news and is one of many neo's partnerships as you can kind of see based on this layout so i think overall that should be a fairly good thing so that's what gave it a nice boost up i think near the second part of the day on thursday on friday though one of the biggest driving factors first thing was this so china was willing to cooperate or is willing to cooperate with the states and that's actually been one point about neo that's caused it to go down so much over this last little bit and as i've pointed out even looking at the ps ratio on neo it's 1.2 even the forecast is one so there's no expectation for NEO in the foreseeable future. So the multiple is just nothing. And that is because, like I said, institutions haven't really been adding that level of support because there's been a lot of geopolitical issues which ultimately did really affect NEO and other Chinese EVs. But you saw a nice bump up Friday morning. And then of course, there was a lot of optimism associated to the broader market for rate cuts. So that's what gave it an additional boost near the second part of the day. So I think in reality, that's pretty good stuff in my opinion. But despite all that though, you had shorts really second guessing it because they did increase a small amount, 342,000 shares on Friday, 13.85% of the free flow is being shorted utilization is 87.1 cost of borrow average is 1.41 percent as well so despite the green day shorts really were hesitant about that and increasing and funny thing did happen so for those of you that don't know i do cover lucid as well under this channel and exact same scenario happened so you do see this sell-off that happened with neo for no news nothing like that lucid encountered the exact same thing right here at the basically the same time. So when it comes down to this, it is both correlated with options. So in case you guys don't know options, especially call options, you want it to close above a certain strike price. That's if you bought it, right? So in Neo's case, it was hovering very close to that 450 strike price. Lucid's case, the 250. So what did market makers do? They shorted it. So this is why typically market makers and shorts are kind of one among the same, if that makes sense. But in Lucid's case, and like I said, Neo, it's advantageous for shorts or market makers to bring it below that strike price, thus making all those call options expire worthless because market makers don't have readily available inventory of all the EVs because it's very volatile. So it's a little bit more advantageous for them just to go in the open market and buy it. So this is why they had Neo close at $4.49, right below that $4.50, thus I believe the 23 or 25,000 in open interest at that seven or uh, 450 strike price is worthless. So a lot of manipulation and it's kind of funny how blatant it is. And to do it on two different stocks in the same sector is kind of crazy. And it does point out the fact that whoever is shorting Neo clearly is shorting Lucid. So that's very, very interesting. And you can kind of see that based on here, the intraday. So you did see for whatever reason, shorts just felt justified to increase right there. So very, very interesting stuff. But beside the point, I'll give you a quick overview of everything else, starting off with this. So the technicals, or sorry, uh, analyst ratings. So last rating did come out four days ago, right after I did my recent video. $4.10 price target that was done by Goldman Sachs, Tina, who does have a 19% success rating. So this one didn't really 
move the market as probably a lot of people would have anticipated. Maybe if Tina's rating was a little bit better than 19%, then that might have been the case. But as a consensus among all the analysts, $6.59 is anticipated, so that does represent a 46% upside or 47%. And while I'm actually on here, based on the Elliott Wave technicals, it does have a pivot point right here of $4.05. So for as long as Neo is above that, then it is anticipated to hit between this range, so this 533 and 560. So over this last week, Neo has recovered its technicals and is now looking very, very optimistic because prior to that, I was pointing that it was kind of estimated to hit the mid threes sooner rather than later. So very optimistic stuff when it comes down to that. On a side note, if you are looking for a lot of good compiled information, such as technicals, ratings, even analyst forecasts for upcoming earnings, take a look at Interactive Brokers for all of this information to be completely free. Link in the description below and also the comments. But getting right back to it, looking at some of the technicals. So right now, or I guess on Friday with closing at $4.49, it is trading between this S1 and the pivot. So going into next week, so starting on Monday, 508 will be that next strong resistance slash target that you'll wanna watch for Neo to get above. And then 438 will be that next strong support. So you'll definitely wanna watch for that to hold. A lot of volatility is coming next week, so we just have to wait and see what does come out down the pipeline. But momentum wise, Neo is looking fairly good, so that could push it a little bit higher. Plus, there's not really many data points coming out on Monday and Tuesday, rather it's just Wednesday and Friday. So Monday and Tuesday is gonna be largely linked to technicals as well as companies unveiling their earnings. Just to give you a quick overview on this, so on the actual chart itself, this is actually Lucid, so I'll pull up Neo. So looking on the actual chart, it did successfully transition from the lower to the higher percentile of the boiling band. Looking at stochastic, you do see a very nice bullish deviation so white line above the red which overall is fairly good the only downside is that it is at 50 so that is considered somewhat neutral now so it's not really oversold as it once was here so still something to kind of consider and in order for the technicals to be really confirming a upside you usually need two consecutive trading days above in the higher percentile to confirm that but still it does look like neo is going to be heading to the five dollar range which obviously is that 50 day moving average ultimately number of retail investors have been getting in for a while now ever since it looks like April the 2nd so if you are one of those individuals give yourself a shout out in the comments below or if you've been selling let me know on why so let me know your thoughts on Neo as well what's your thoughts for instance on this blatant manipulation with both Neo and Lucid like I said so do you think that this is justified or I don't know it's kind of crazy to see it happen and maybe I'll scour other sectors just to see if there is a similar kind of action because it didn't really happen with Rivian, Polestar, it just happened with those two that I can see. SoFi is somewhat heavily shorted, didn't happen with them. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, Pound here, not really much similar kind of circumstance. So what's your thoughts? Don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Hopefully everyone's having an amazing weekend thus far. One final thing, make sure you guys definitely take advantage of this promo. Simply sign up for a new account, throw $100 at it, and they give you seven fractional shares of the Meg 7. So pretty kick-ass deal. Link in the description below and also the comments. With all that said, appreciate all of you watching.